What's going on guys? John Elder here for Codeby.com and in this video, we're going to start to build out the contact page for our dental website with Python and Django. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to build out the contact page, the email form, all that good stuff. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, contact page. What are we looking at? Well, let's head back over to our original theme website, the preview website. And look through here, we've got some different things we can do, we can do an about page, right? We can do a service page, we can do a pricing page. Those aren't that interesting. If we come to the contact page, though, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. We've got a map that we're going to want to modify. And we've got this form that we're going to want to modify that sends us an email or sends the dentist an email when somebody wants to get in touch with them. So that's what we're going to start to build out in this video. It's going to take us a while to get through this because sending email with Django is going to take us a video or two to walk through, but we can at least start to build out this page and maybe play with this map and uh, get this form at least working a little bit in this video. So first things first, head back over to our templates that we unzipped way back when. And these are the only ones in our template uh, our unzipped folder that we have left. And we can see here's this contact.html page. So that's the one we want. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we just want to drag this in to our Django project. So what I'm going to do is open up another file explorer here. And we just want to go to C. Let's see, we call this dentist site. And then dentist. Now we want this in our website directory in our templates templates directory. Right now, all we have is our home page. So we can right click and paste this in. So now we have that there. All right, so now we can head over to our sublime text and look in our templates file and here's our contact page. So first things first, we need to staticify this page. So we need to add our load static tag. And uh, before we go through here and do all the other things, let's build out this page in our Django project first. So remember, whenever we create a, a web page in Django, it's always a three step process. You need the HTML template. We've got that right there. You need a URL and you need a views.py function, right? So let's do that real quick. Let's head over to our URLs.py. I'm just going to copy this one we already have. And we want the path of this thing to be contact.html. We want it to point to views.contact, which we don't have yet, but we'll make in just a second. And let's name this contact. Go ahead and save that. So URL's done. Now we need a view. So again, I'm just going to copy the one we already have here. And let's paste it in and let's call this contact. And we want to render the request and we want this to be contact.html. So if we save that, now we're good to go. So now we can head back over to our website and go to our actual site and we can go to contact here and boom, the page works. Now, obviously all the, the CSS is all out of whack. So we need to fix that real quick, but we know how to do that. We've already done it before. So I'm going to go to my home page. I'm just going to copy one of these static tags, right? And I'm going to come back over here. I'm just going to paste it in and we can get rid of all of that. So this is our static tag. Now we just need to go through here and change all of these. So the first thing is the favicon. So get rid of those two things. And there's not many things to change. So I'm just going to do it really quickly right here while you're watching it should only take a minute or so. So bear with me. Uh, here's the style sheet. So remember, we need to put that in CSS slash style dot CSS. Right. So that is that. Now we just need to change the PNG and the JPEG files and there's two each. So I'm going to go to control F and I'm just going to type in dot PNG. And you can see there's the first one that pops up so we can add this one. And I know this is very boring, but it'll only take a second. And we could find again, and there's the next one. So let's add that. Copy, paste, 
come up here. Copy this again. And I think that's it. Yep, just two. So now we can do the same thing for dot JPEG. And I'll paste that in, paste that in. Copy, paste, one down, one to go. Find, and there it is. So we can paste that. Copy, paste, paste, and we're good to go. Now, finally, there are J, uh, JavaScript files. So there's four or five of those. So I'm just gonna paste, 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 and then almost done. We're done right after this. So copy, paste, and copy. And paste, <laughs> two more. That wasn't too bad, right? Didn't take very long. And copy and paste. Okay, so let's save this. And now we can head back over here and hit reload and hopefully boom, now that works. Okay, so first things first, I wanna change this map. And how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at our code. And I'm just gonna search for map. And here we see the contact area start, Google Maps div. And we need to change this iframe to whatever we want. So let's head over to maps.google.com and just search for whatever address your dentist is at. So I used to live at 10 West Elm in Chicago. So I'm gonna pull that up, nostalgia. Here it is, there's my old Oak Street Beach. Hancock building was right there. It's a great neighborhood. So let's say you could zoom in and out to however, whatever level you want to show up in your map. So I think this is too close. This is probably just right. So get it to where you want it and then come over here to the share button and just click this embed a map option. And we want to just copy this HTML of this iframe. So we've got that. Now we can head back over to our code and just right here, paste all this in. Now, you can see there's some other stuff here and we probably don't want that other stuff. So instead, I'm just gonna copy all of this SRC uh, gobbledygook right here and I'm gonna paste it in right here to our original map. Okay, so boom, there it is. So now I can get rid of this new one. We just paste it in there. Okay, so now let's save this and head back over here and hit reload and boom, now this map is Chicago. There's my Oak Street Beach. There's my old apartment. So that's how you change that, very easy. Next, you're gonna to wanna to change this address thing. So that's just right here. So it's actually 10 West Elm, Chicago, Illinois, 610. Change the phone if you want, whatever. 111, 222, right? Maybe you wanna get rid of the fax completely. Change this email to, uh, Dr. Dr. J at gmail.com, whatever, save it, come back here, hit reload, and now that's updated. Okay, so aesthetically this is looking good, but this form doesn't work. So let's play with this really quickly. I'm not gonna set it up to actually send an email yet. We'll do that in the next video because this is gonna take a little while, but we can at least get this form working. So let's take a look at the code here and head down until we see this form tag. And you'll notice the action is nothing and the method is post. Now, the first thing we need to do always when creating any type of web form is to create a CSRF token. So that's just CSRF underscore token. And this is a cross-site request forgery token, something like that. It keeps hackers from being able to hijack your form after you click the send button, basically. So you wanna do that. And the next thing we need to do is point this somewhere. Well, we wanna point it back to itself. So to do that, I'm gonna use a Django URL tag. And I'm gonna call URL, and let's just call this contact. Why contact? Because in our urls.py file, that's the name we gave it for this URL. So basically what we're doing here is when somebody clicks the button to send the form, it will revert back to itself, the page itself will. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need to do there. Now in our views.py file, we need to make some changes. So here's our contact 
view. So whenever a page is served up, it's, it's a get request. Somebody is asking the server, hey, go get me that page, right? When you fill out a form, that's a post request. You're posting data, right? So we need to designate between those two things in our view. So we can go if request.method equals uh, post do stuff. Else just return the page, right? So if somebody just comes to the page, this will get called because they won't be posting, they'll be getting and that will fire this up and it'll just show the page. On the other hand, if somebody goes to the page and then fills out a form, this will get fired up and it will do something. So what is it we want to do? Well, we wanna take whatever they posted from that form and assign it to a variable that we can then do stuff to. So there are three things in this page. Uh, if, we, if we look over in this form, so there's this name, email and message box. So if we look at our code, we can see, look for the name variable in each of these input boxes, input, input, text area. Those correspond to input, input, text area, right? With me? So for this one, input, this is the message name. That's the person's name. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it back over and I'm gonna paste that in. Then, Look for the next one, here's name. This is the message email or the person's email that's filling out the form. So we'll paste that in. And then finally, the last one is just called message. So we'll copy that and post that, paste that in. Now in Python, we don't like hyphens for our, our variables. We like underscores, so I'll change that. Now we need to set each of these equal to something. What? Well, whatever was posted from the form. So to grab that data, we just type in the request dot post and then this, right? So I can copy this and paste this for each of these. And then in between these quotation marks is just whatever the name of that index box was on the form. And remember it was dash, not a hyphen. So we need to change that back. Same thing here, dash, not a hyphen, or hyphen, not a dash, whichever. And then the last one is that. All right. And finally, what do we want to do? Well, let's also after somebody's posted, let's oops, let's uh, refer them back to the same page and then we'll flash up a little message that said, you know, uh, your thing was sent successfully. So we can do that by passing in any of these variables into the context dictionary right here, and then we can reference it on the website itself. So let's do that real quick, just to make sure this whole thing is working. So I wanna pass um, the person's name. That's this thing. So I can pass that into the context dictionary. It's a Python dictionary. Dictionaries have key value pairs. So let's create a key. Let's just call it name, message name. And the value is whatever the person posted to that form. This variable right here, which is this variable right here, which is actually just the posted stuff, the posted name from the form. Okay, so let's save this and let's head back over to our contact page. And let's see, get in touch instead of right up here, let's just paste in whatever the person's name is. So to do that, we just do this. Since we added this message underscore name as a context variable, we can now reference it on the page using these double bracket tags, opening and closing tags. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and let's check this out. So let's head back here, let's hit reload. All right, nothing has changed, nothing has changed. Now, if I type in John, my email address is john at codemy.com. And I'm just gonna type test. Now, if we hit this, Boom, it redirects us and now John appears right there. So we know this whole thing has been successful. The form is working, we're able to pass data from the form back to our Django backend and then back again to the homepage as we see right here. So everything seems to be working. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this little bit right here. We don't actually want that, it was just for testing purposes. So go ahead and save that and okay. So, 
we're pretty much ready to go now. Now we just need to uh, set up this form to actually send us an email when somebody fills it out and, and clicks the button. Now we don't want to send us an email. We're going to want to send the dentist an email, right? We'll send it to his receptionist probably. And she'll then, you know, do whatever the dentist wants her to do with it or him to do with it, whatever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're coming right along. I think in the next video, we'll look at that because it'll take us a few minutes and this video is already getting a little bit long, but it's coming together and starting to look good. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership pages, $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 80,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.